Hi, everybody. Uh, it's time to move on to chapter four. Uh, I was going to play some Taylor Swift in the background of this one, but I knew I would drive everybody nuts with that, so I thought we would just move on. I was also going to insert some videos, but Google's not being very friendly with me today, so we'll just move on to the review. Uh, not too many key terms in this chapter, but a couple. I know terrorism is in a later chapter, but it applies to this one. If you remember our discussion earlier in the year, I asked you the question, why the terrorists hate us? Um, we'll get into that later, but remember, terrorism is... When a group tries to intimidate the population because they hold the people responsible and they want us to change the government and the policies and so that's why terrorists target the civilians like you and i uh culture remember this is kind of a tricky definition too we all hear it, but never know what it, exactly what it means but essentially all the customs and traditions and institutions that go along with a group of people how uh, you practice over a period of time but it's all your traditions and customs uh, remember, habit is something that you do individually, and then custom is something that is practiced by the whole group. And so I just mentioned custom as part of the definition of culture. Habit is individual, custom is the group. Remember, folk is going to be a small, homogenous group of people. You're usually isolated, they're rural. Uh, and pop culture is obviously a large, heterogeneous group. Uh, they share a lot of things. Uh, they don't always look the same, where folk culture, most people look and sound the same, or pop culture, uh, many different races and ethnicities, but we share a lot of the same uh, customs. Uh, moving on to QSU 1, where are folk and pop your know, leisure activities distributed? Remember, folk has anonymous hearths. We're not sure where they begin. They're traditions that are passed down through generation to generation, uh, so we're not exactly sure where they begin. Pop culture, on the other hand, we do know where it begins. Uh, you typically buy it in a store. Uh, you download it. Uh, it has large groups using and listening and watching and doing the same thing. Uh, because we have, in pop societies, we have much more leisure time. Uh, we're much wealthier, uh, so we can buy things with that disposable income. Remember, disposable income is when you buy things that you want, not that you need. Uh, like the Justin Bieber CD or the Taylor Swift CD, you don't necessarily need it, uh, but you want it. And so that's the difference between pop and folk. Uh, they spread in different ways as well. The diffusion for folk uh, is going to be relocation. They're not using technology. Uh, it's one person moving to the next area, um, bringing that idea, that song, uh, that thought uh, with them to the new place and spreading it to them. Where pop... pop uh, is much more hierarchical. Uh, it's from the top down, big cities to small cities. So, for example, hip hop begins in New York uh, and then eventually spreads to Philadelphia, then eventually spreads to Baltimore, and then eventually spreads to Washington, D.C., and then spreads further away, even to Europe, Japan, the Caribbean, and so forth. Uh, again, money plays a role, technology plays a role, uh, but usually starts in large places and begins its. Uh, downward movement. Uh, remember folk music. Uh, we don't really know the origins of this. The book gives us a pretty specific date, but we really don't know where it begins. Uh, the difference between folk and pop is it's events in daily life, and we talked about this in class earlier in the year. Uh, you know, it's stories about births, deaths, marriages, fishing, jobs. Uh, what you can make an argument is country music, folk, or pop. Uh, don't folk songs or country songs talk about those various things uh, but the difference is going to be uh, these are sung in families and groups and passed on from generation to generation when you buy your taylor swift cd it's not passed down to you from your mother or your father or your grandparents you download it uh, and it's all about the money uh, it's usually performed of large groups people are wanting to make money uh, where in folk customs, music is not designed to make money. It's designed to talk about daily life, where country music, rock music, rap music uh, is going to be more money-based. Uh, and again, we see clustering and concentrations of different types of music. Uh, Nashville, of course, is where country music is concentrated. Uh, Detroit is uh, Motown music. New Orleans is jazz. Uh, again, so I asked you earlier in the year, is country music folk or pop? Right now, it is pop, again, because it's designed to make money uh, performed in front of large groups. 
Uh, soccer is another one that has changed over the years. Uh, it starts out as a folk custom uh, in the 1800s. It's eventually taught in schools. It begins to spread. Um, but once they start paying people to play and they start charging people to come into events, that's when it's going to make the transition from folk to pop. Uh, it spreads in different ways. Uh, relocation to fusion, obviously, uh, when people leave England and move over to mainland Europe, Netherlands, Spain, and Russia, and they bring that idea with them and start to spread it to people. Uh, it also spreads hierarchical because they, the colonies of England uh, are taught the game as well. So it's taught from the top down, uh, the colonizer down to the individual. Uh, let's move on to Keisha 2. Uh, folk customs are influenced by religion and environment. We always remember that. Uh, since they are rural, they are isolated, um, religion plays a huge role in their uh, customs, but also the environment does as well. The style of clothes they wear, the houses they live in uh, is going to be determined by the environment. Uh, and that's why regional differences are so important. Obviously, someone who lives in uh, Nunavut in Canada uh, is going to have a much different style of dress than someone who lives in the Brazilian uh, rainforest. Um, income levels obviously play a role. Uh, we're more material-based, uh, and so we buy more things, CDs, movies, shoes, clothes. Um, and that's why you're going to see Volk varies from place to place at a given time. Uh, from one mountain range to another mountain range in Chile, you're going to see different customs and practices uh, because of that location, that isolation, and so forth, and lack of income. Uh, this is where food plays a role. Obviously, a taboo is a restriction on the type of food you can eat. It's part of your customs. It's part of your belief system that you cannot eat particular foods. Uh, the Jewish people obviously have kosher laws, uh, this all begins because um, of pigs. Uh, when they were traveling and walking around thousands of years ago in search of food, uh, pigs were not very, considered very helpful. In fact, they basically competed against humans for water and things like that, and so they weren't very useful. Um, Hindus obviously have a taboo against meat in general, but particularly cows. Uh, they're important for two reasons. There's a religious background uh, belief that cows are significant in, to Hindus, but cows are also used for plowing. Remember, when we get to agriculture, they're not very rich, and so they have to use, um, you can't eat what you need to plow your fields. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, we looked at this map earlier in the year, basically just, just showing where the most popular foods are. You can see Utah, we love our In-N-Out burgers um, as much as the West does. Let's stop there.